How are you? How are you, Rosie? Oh my God, it's so hot. I just ran back from the pharmacy. I just got my second vaccine. Congratulations. Congrats. That's dope. That is so dope. How you feel? How are you feeling? It's it's literally like 10 minutes ago. So I'm perfect. I'm like, hey, Momo. Momo's in the house. Momo. Woo. That's why I had to do today's Instagram live a day early, just in case I'm sick tomorrow. I didn't want to make anybody, uh, any of the fans sad who have gotten used to checking into our IG lives every week. So thank you. Thank you for joining me a day early. Thank you for having me. But uh, what'd you get? Did you get Pfizer? Uh, Moderna. I got the Moderna. Moderna. Moderna, right on, man, right on. I'm I'm officially related somehow to Dolly Parton. Wow, that's that's iconic. <laughs> well, you know that she she gave a million dollars for that uh, to make that vaccine. Yeah, in the beginning, I, I I did hear that. That's like, she's dope, dude. She's she's done a lot behind the scenes. She's done a lot behind the scenes. She's incredible. But today, I want to talk out loud and proud about season four renewal congratulations yes thank you, you very seeing? much it's it's so it was so dope yesterday was my my sixth year of sobriety and then to get that on top of it like it was just like it was like the stars were aligned it was so beautiful it was it was emotional really yeah congratulations i mean just, just on both those accounts yes ma'am thank you ma'am no don't call me ma'am that makes me old Hey, that's the that's the respect I guess in my, in my blood. So. <laughs> Your primos from Whittier say what's up. Shout what's out up? Whittier. What's cracking? Shout out from Arizona. We got everybody coming in to check in on Creeper. Okay. Arizona in the house. Yeah, lots of people on here. Everybody's congratulating you on your sobriety. That's a really big deal. Thank you, thank you. It's the only reason I'm I'm able to be here with you, Rosie, is because I am sober. And 100%. I I I. Not to super get into my life, but I just turned three years sober in April 2nd. So, so that we're is here. Good. Long distance high five. Long distance high five. There, there we, go. we go. There we go. Congratulations. Okay. So, oh, shout out. There's people from Brazil. We get people from all over the world. Are Brazil you in the house. Shout out. Yeah, how do you feel about that. all these fans from all over the world? How much they love the show? Dude, it's so dope. It's it's like, it's like it's unbelievable. You know what I mean? Just to see the people like, I'm sure we'll get into it, but just like, they love, they're so embedded in every character. Like some of the, I, I try to interact with everybody. They call me Mr. Emoji because I'm always giving praying hands or, or an arms. But it's so beautiful because they're calling out stuff. Like they're, they're writing their own scripts on what they want to happen next. It's dope. I do the same thing. Uh, Elgin all the time is messing with me. He goes, Rosie, next season we'll have you in the writer's room. Because no, I'm always I, like, this is a great idea. I seen that on, on the on the open table when I heard him oh, say that himself. I heard him say that himself. Me. That was but dope. I really want to kick off this chat with you, and I'm sure you do not remember this, but before season one premiered, they we had like a whole like press day, and we got to meet all of you guys. And I remember. You and I, and you, you and I were talking about the importance of this show because so many people want to say, "Oh, this is so stereotypical," and I was so impressed and so moved by your story. Um, I, I, I'm hoping it's okay and you want to share it with these people as to why these stories are important? Yes, I mean, I'm an open book. I'm, to me, it's important because, like, for instance, this season alone, by tapping into everyone individually, you're humanizing us, you know, and, and for the brothers and the sisters that live these lives, they're human beings. They love, whether they got insecurities or whether they have confidence, they have mothers, fathers, maybe they're abandoned and they have brothers and sisters in the patch or their brothers are their true brothers. It's true love. It may be love for all the wrong reasons when you become aware of what's controlling you, but it's true love. You know, um, I related to the gang life only because that was the life that I lived. And a lot, it, a lot of it was BS, you know, at the end of the day when I, when I learned and I healed myself, but the love was real, man. We, we did all the wrong things for all the right reasons in our heart at times. But your love for me, the identity that I created was so important for me. It was all I had to live off of. And that's why this the writing this season is just so, it's so moving because it's so real. You're able to tap in like, you know, with, ta look at Tazis. Like people act like, oh, that's taboo and that's, that shit is real life in the gang life and in the culture, whether it's acceptable or not, that's real life. You know, you can't 
you can't say, oh, I, I, I'm, bo I'm not gay. If you're born with a certain feeling in your heart and your chest, it is what it is. You are who you are. And that's the beauty about being human. And, you know, I, I tap into that because that's huge. I believe it's huge. You know what I mean? To be able to tap that because so many individuals, men and women, are going through that right now. And you should be accepted no matter what walk of life you come from, you know? Amen. Um, I want to say that from, like, our chats throughout the years, what really jumped out as you coming through Creeper was – for me was in that scene where everybody goes to war and and bishop's like oh we're all getting out of here and creeper was like nope i'm, I'm gonna yeah. go be with that dude that got caught and like we're not leaving no man behind talk to me about that so you you, you seek from all the way up even to that that date creeper is the only one that doesn't have a vice on him right now my head is clear so the bylaws are running through my head daily and that's one of the main ones. You never leave a man behind no matter what. Because at the end of the day, Creeper has to look at himself in the mirror. You know, I'm a hop, skip, and a jump away from Coco's position because I'm an ex dope You know, Creeper is an ex dope So with that being said, I'm the only one that I'm not worried about a kid dying in my life or my woman leaving me. I don't have drug problems per se right at this, at this instant. So Creeper is able to be that, that one that sees the truth through all this madness, because I believe that I'm the only one that's coherent to the present. I'm not living in the past and I'm not worried about tomorrow, which I think is beautifully written as quiet as my character is and step back and stand offish. You got to trust the process, right? And part of trusting the process is sitting back and being aware. And Creeper is very aware. And that's, that's the one thing that's been constant through all three seasons. But the I, loyalty, I, uh -huh. sorry, but, but no, the no, loyalty. The loyalty, is, the loyalty is what we all join for, right? It's, it's that the family, you know, it's, it, it's, it's when you take on that. And, of course, this is, the, 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 this is Hollywood, right? But, you know, the brothers that I know, you know, in that life, they love each other to, to, to you know, some till death do his part in that, in, that, in that sense. And they are going to, some take it full blown, excuse my language. They take it full blown. They, they take it full blown that till death do us part, I will not let a brother down. You know, not the, these, some of these brothers are ex Marines and, you know, they come from certain lives to where all they have was their friends. You know, they didn't have family. So their brothers are their family, you know, even if they're not blood. And they take that to the T. And Creeper takes that to the T, to like, like to the end of the earth. Like, I mean, come on, to walk away from my own club, to go save a brother that's not even from my club. But I know we're out of bounds. We're in Stockton. I'm not letting him go to the county by himself. Hell no. They're going to beat the hell out of him. So they're going to beat the hell out of both of us. I'm already beat down anyways. So when I get out of the county, if I get out of the county, they're going to know, hey, that fool creeper's a rider. He ain't leaving nobody behind. You know what I mean? Because I live for it. Mm -hmm. How much of, of yourself do you kind of inject into the character, if at all? Because for, for that moment, I, I felt very much, and I, I mean, I don't even really know you that well, but from what I know from you, I just felt like, oh, I feel like that's something Joseph would do in real life. Like, that's leave the, no man behind. And, and, and now it's, it's, it's leave no man behind in the same sense of family. You know, leave, leave no, none of my family members, my children, you know, um, their mother, my, my, my mother, you know, the people that mean the most to me. And even on the street, if I see somebody getting hurt, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand up for them. It's because that's where my heart's at. And I wasn't secure like that before within my own skin. You know, I, I did things to, uh, I was an impressionist. I did things to, to, to please you so it, it would fulfill this void that, that was voided in me because I didn't get it at home. And that's why I looked onto the streets. So, yes, Joseph Lucero brings a lot of truth and real life experience to Creeper. Um, but that's just the beauty of our writers. You know, they're able to get to, they get to know us. Like when I, I hashtag the hell out of it's a family thing. And that's because it truly is. And true, no matter what, you don't have to get along with your family in order to be family. As you can see, you know, not everybody gets along in the club to like best friends, some be more better friends than others, some hide secrets. But at the end of the day, we're still brothers. You know what I mean? So I think that's huge. Now, as much as we talk about the brotherhoods, there are some things, I mean, obviously there are rules, but I kept thinking like, you know, these are these are brothers. So, for example, like Coco's going through this spiral and he can't reach out to like his, his MC for help in getting out of, you know, that because like literally he could lose his life. Right. For IV drug use and for and for uh, being gay. So for those things, I'm just like like a brotherhood and a family doesn't really have conditions like that. So I'm always confused about that. No, but I think that's you. You hit it. And that's where you're able to 
to hopefully when you when you become balanced, no matter what, if any character becomes balanced, they may have that internal dialogue with themselves and start to pull. You know, who knows? Maybe that's what Creeper has. You know what I mean? Creeper has a little bit of aware, but at the same time, Creeper's too embedded into his brothers and, and the fact. I know what's right and wrong. Creeper knows what's right and wrong. But if my brother does wrong, I still got his back to the fullest. Like, that's the loyalty that we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. And that's what we sign up for. And we all know what we signed up for. I got I, I got Coco's back to the fullest, it, whether I seen him slamming or not. Like, in, in episode two, I know what the hell he's doing. I called that shit out right away. That's why I chased him out. And I walked him all the way out, and, and I, I felt to get back, and I was like, all right, well, let me just, let, let, me, let me throw some icing on the cake and just ease this out and just bring up the neti pot. You know what I mean? Because I didn't want to tear, I, you know, Creeper didn't want to tear into him too much. But it's kind of like, hey, I planted the seed to let you know Creeper's aware, bro, but I'm here for you, dog, if you need me. Shout out to Danny Pino, who was with us last week. He's in the comments shouting out for Creeper. Is, is I love there, Danny. Is there any Danny. place in this world that Creeper could end up like uh, Marcus Alvarez and go work for Galindo's cartel? You know, um, no. <laughs> no. Sorry, Danny. No. No, I, you know, uh, no, I'm, I'm too loyal. Unless, you know, the brothers, it was an idea of the brothers and we had to connect the dots some way, somehow. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure I would, I would sit and listen. But I think Creeper's, um, man, his loyalty is just so, it's so deep. There's no question about it. I mean, he sits back so quiet and watches everything and just doesn't say much unless it, you know, unless, you know, they're, they're trying to clown my president like in episode one. And I'm just going to throw bombs right back at Concha and let him know that grandma's party was a blast. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh. and, you know, <laughs> and that's just how it is, you know, but Creeper pays attention to everything. Now that we know Taza's big secret, right? I keep trying to catch myself because I just watched the finale like two days ago and I'm like, and I can't even talk about nine because that's tonight and I usually speak yeah. on the episode after. So I'm like, yeah. focus. Um, shit, what, what was I saying? Now I lost my whole thread. You're talking about Taza. Oh, now that we, so now, right. So now that we know Taza's <laughs> secret, do you do you foresee that this secret, like the brothers are going to learn about this secret? And how do you think Creeper would react if he knew not just the secret of him being gay, but like the things that he did to cover that secret? How do you how do you think Creeper will feel about that? Uh, you know, to answer the first part of that question, I don't think the brothers are going to find out. I wouldn't think and I would just I, I don't base that off of knowing that's what is going to happen. But I base that off of our president Bishop. I mean, he's president for a reason. We want him to be one king for a reason. So he's not going to stir up within his own. He's going to handle it himself the best way. And I know I would, I would think my trust and loyalty into him is he's not going to make, he's not going to burn somebody out that he, that he loves. You know what I mean? He may out somebody and you got to go. You know what I mean? Um, that may or may not happen, but I, I believe in, I believe in Bishop that, that, you know, he, he's charismatic, but at the same time, he's strategical. You know what I'm saying? He knows how to, plot this stuff to where he's not going to incite us, you know what I mean, to feel a certain way and have to go, you know what I'm saying, maybe hurt our own brother, you know, because some of that stuff is, I loved Riz, you know, uh, Creeper loved Riz, he stood by his side, you know what I mean, and I think if Creeper found that shit out, man, you know, the loyalty for Riz, I may do something to him, you know, and, and that's just speaking from Creeper's standpoint, you know what I mean, because I was there by, by Riz's bedside, you know what I mean, when I, I, I left for five seconds and came back and he's dead, you know, and I've accepted the fact that it was natural causes. You know what I mean? If I was to find out my own brother did that, you know what I mean? The loyalty again would come would come full circle. Okay, we're about to switch over to Frankie, but I want to set up the rest of the season for Creeper. What can you tease about what's coming up for him and maybe even what you want to see for him next season? You know, um, I think the best thing I can say is, you know, Creeper, Creeper's there. No matter what, Creeper's ready to go. So whatever is written, Creeper's going to bring the truth to it, you know, 100%. You know, um, hopefully Creeper gets out of jail. And if Creeper doesn't get out of jail, then we're, we're going to have some, some prisoning, some county scenes. You know what I mean? But if, if he does get out of jail, he's going to go right back to doing what he does and taking care of his brother one day at a time. Right? Uh, I think he's going to get out of jail. Come on. He's got, he's got <laughs> too much to offer, you know, this, this story for him to just be stuck in, in prison. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
But thank you so much for your time and always for, you know, sharing the truth and, and for bringing Creeper. Everyone loves Creeper. I was talking to the cast yesterday. We were doing this this video thing and, and everybody just, you know, we kept talking about that this show resonates with so many people because the varied layers of each character reminds us of ourselves in some ways, of our loved ones, our friends, you know, just people that we know or that we meet. And I feel like really that's what, resonates with, with this why this show resonates with so many people and that was what i said and that's the beauty of having elgin elgin knows the yep. life you know he knows what it's like to come from pain and when you know pain and you've healed that pain you're you're okay to embrace it again and hug it and then share it with the world but not only share the problem you're able to share the solution and that's the beauty of this journey i believe with mayans and so when we get to 10th season or 11th season we'll be able to show this journey and hopefully a solution at the end for some along the way. We want to see Creeper get a honey. Creeper needs to get a honey next season. Uh, <laughs> well, see, then then Creeper's going to have issues like the rest of my brothers, if that happens. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Creeper, Creeper don't want no issues. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah, everyone on here is saying how much they love Creeper. Creeper's the sh I got mad love for Creeper. Oh Man, yeah, I didn't you. ask you. I didn't ask you about Creeper's bad Spanish. Next season, he needs to learn Spanish. Hey, Cre Creeper. Hey, Creeper's been trying a lot. You know what I mean? YouTube, YouTube helps Creeper a lot. You know they got <laughs> YouTube in in Santo Padre. So, but the the Wi-Fi is a little jumpy. So, you know what I mean? He needs English in barreras. Who? They, we used to have this program on Spanish language television where they would teach you on audio tapes how to do English. So we need the reverse for for Creeper. Yeah, we need, definitely need to reverse so, so I can get that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Joseph. <laughs> thank you, awesome Rosie. Have a great day. You. I hope you feel better with that shot. Oh One love. Oh, my God. Thank, I'm still like, oh, my God. Wait, I don't know how to, I don't know what I'm doing. Will it bring drink, drinking to? Drink it water. Bring, I, that's, what, that's why I'm like sitting here drinking water. Let me see if it. Oh, my God. We're all together. Oh, I'm out of here. You guys, please yeah, love her. I didn't that's know you That's my brother right there. there. My brother. No. Love you guys. I love Have you. Great, great hang, out for, hang out for a minute Peace. if you want. We can say what's up. Uh, I, I, I'm going to let him get, go ahead and do his interview. I love you guys, man. Peace. Bye. Thank love you, you Joseph. Thank you. Frankie. How you doing, Rosie? I love those glasses. Wait. I'm uh, thanks. Come well, in case you wanted to punch me out, you wouldn't hit a guy with glasses, would you? I wear glasses, too. So, yes. Uh, it's called turning 51 or so. Yo, Nails is in the comments. Uh oh. We got nails. Justina? Uh-huh. Sending Justina lots of love. Sending so much love to Justina. She's wonderful. We can yeah. start off we can start off there. Like my heart is like shipping this couple. I want nails and hang to work out. What's going on? Tell me. I don't know. I, I plead the fifth. I mean, I don't even think Hank knows. I think <laughs> I think he's so emotionally driven uh by this woman. Um, it's, it's, it's an interesting, uh, dynamic because, uh, I think the audience, I think nails, I think, uh, his mother, they see a side of him that even his club brothers don't see, you know? So when he's, you know, when it's all business, he's, he's all business, but there's something about her that that's his kryptonite. You know, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. You know, we'll find out. Do, do, do we have a story as to like how they first met or has he just like casually seen her always there at the bar? Like, I, you know, I, I think it was one of those things where it was kind of like, you know, uh, Wayne's world. He saw her probably at the clubhouse and it was like, a car, you know, the hair was blowing, dreamy <laughs> was playing and then he ran into a pole or, you know, something. And yeah, I, I, I don't, I mean, I'll tell you what, meeting Justina to do this, we had never met prior to, you know, doing the work and, I can totally see why Hank would, would get her and why it would be so easy to fall in love with her character. But she's also such a, a great person that it, it was just easy to kind of go there. However, that, you know, however it turns out, um, you know, I couldn't have been set up with a better, a better actor friend now, you know, somebody who's coming to my life. That's a, that's the magic of minds. I think the people that come in and out of your, your journey is, is something to, to, you know, be said something amazing. And this season, they're really propping up our badass Latinas, right? We've got the best. You know, I'm so happy to see Adelita doing her thing. Um, I'm a big fan of, of Sarah's work, so I, I'm starting to see her ferocity and her, you know, her her in a 
internal pain kind of manifest itself out more. And, and then we got Natalia Cordova. <sighs> I love her. I love right? her. Our Latina superhero. Right. Of Shield. I know. And then, and then Sulem. Wow. Right. I mean, I'm, you know, I, I'm blown away. And, and Emily, then there's Vanessa. Emily. Emily. Emily Tosto. Right. Van Vanessa. Every. It's just. It's such a good balance of of you know badassery. It's. I think they're more macho than the guys. <laughs> that, that's how we are. You know. Yeah. Now, I love how in this season, we've learned so much more about Hank. Uh, and like you mentioned, we, got, we even got to meet his mom. Can you talk a little bit more about going into, into this character and kind of seeing more of his softer side? Uh, I, I don't, I mean, I think what it is is, you know, people were surprised, which kind of surprised me. You know, they were sort of, you know, you're speaking more, you're talking more. It's like, it's never was really about that for me. I think the fact that, you know, somebody can do a scene and say a hundred words and deliver it beautifully. It's great. All Hank has to do is say table or let's go and the mountains move. And that's, you know, uh, when he's more immersed in, in, in the club. And I think like everybody, we need to have some sort of balance, some sort of humanity. And it obviously goes uh, back to his mother and, um, you know, uh, nails it's just that's you know just part of who he is and i think that's the side where the audience gets to see things that even his club brothers really don't you they know he cares for his club brothers he's all business and he'll stick by the book and he's there hell or high water but it's just because he doesn't speak so much on it you know for me doesn't you know whether he speaks or not his heart is all there and there's also that special bond with Steve. No matter how badly he's treating him, it comes from the heart. Talk to me about working with Momo. Well, the thing is, is, is you know, from Hank's perspective, he's a prospect. You know, it's not a little boys club that these guys are in. And he's got to make the cut. He's got to earn his cut. He's, he's got to be tough to roll. You know, nobody got their, their patch handed to them easily. I mean, uh, they touched on some of that with, with uh, Easy Race and JD's character, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a form of tough love. You know, if Hank is prospecting him and he's sponsoring him, then there's, there's a good reason for it. He sees something that maybe at times he's saying, why did I pick this guy? You can see the frustration. But I think overall, there's a lot of tough love, maybe a very kind of rigid, old school harshness. But I, I think deep down inside, it's, it's just his intentions are to make him a, a, a good member of the club. I mean, he pros he, he's prospecting, so he obviously wants to be there, is what we're picking up on. And so, there's, been, there's been multiple situations where he's really come through for the club. Uh, amazingly, do, yeah. Do, do you think we'll get to see him patched in? You know, we got to wait and see. I, I'll tell you what, the way we did the filming schedule, it was so cross-border because of COVID. There's things I don't even remember till I see it on TV, and I'm just as, as, as surprised. And it's exciting. <laughs> because we didn't go from one, you know, uh, episode to the next that I remember. And, but working with Momo, it was, uh, this season was really beautiful because he is a beautiful person and he does have such a, a big heart. And those times where, you know, I had to harsh out on him as, as his friend and as his brother now, because we've gotten quite close. That was really hard. I mean, it was not an easy thing to, you know, berate, you know, uh, him uh, as a human, but, you know, as far as the storyline goes, that's, those are the rules of the world. That's how it's done. So he got it, you know, but there was times in between takes, I'd give him a hug. I'm like, I'm so sorry, brother. I love you, man. This is, you know, cause it did, oh, it, it eat at me a little bit. I'd be a liar if I said it didn't. It was, it was those burpees, huh? It was those burpees, you know, <laughs> that I don't even know if he pulled those off right. Cause I had already come back to the hotel. Room. I had to look up what burpees were. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they do to stay hard in the yard. Um, but yeah, I mean, Momo's something else. I think he stole a lot of people's hearts and that was, it's, it's, it's great. So. Well, I think it's also the magic of the interaction of both of you. It's, it's, it's very much like a, uh, like a surrogate father, son type of thing. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, Hank's up for him, you know, Hank, Hank isn't going to waste his time with just, you know, uh, I think he defines strength on, on, on character and intention more than, you know, hard talk and chest puffing. And that's something that, you know, I like with people in real life anyway. So it was really easy to 
to fall in with him. You know? Now, oh, real quick, I just go got a text. Uh, my buddy Lenny Lashley is out of the hospital. Uh, he's one of my favorite musicians that is oh. been and he's out and he's good. So I'm, I just want to say, Lenny, congratulations. I'm glad you're out. Stay safe, brother. Yay. Oh my God. That's great news. No, back to business. <laughs> it's been, it, listen, it's been such a tight, it's such a tough, uh, such a tough time. And I know so many of you were dealing with so much. I mean, we are shooting in a pandemic and so many things were going on at the same time as shooting. Uh, yeah. what was that experience like for you? <clears throat> uh, well, I, uh, I lost my father uh, towards the, um, we were filming seven, uh, nine and 10. Oh and my that, God, it, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, it was tough because my father and I had a very tough relationship. In fact, if that scene with uh, Steve and Hank where he's, you know, kind of having a moment, I kind of felt like I was channeling my father. You know, some of the things about my father that were difficult, uh, things I finally made peace with, but it, it, uh, it, it a lot, art imitated life and life imitated art very much so this past season and i'm not gonna lie i was pretty broken um the last couple episodes but you know you got to show up and do your job and at one point you know i was kind of swaying out and i know jd kind of had to get me back in my lane and i thank you for that jd uh and i just realized that as, as, as much as i was in some inner turmoil and some pain i was able to put it to the art and i thank elgin and debbie for and the writers for giving me uh, an outlet for that because that really did save me uh, not just as an artist but as a human and it's just so crazy how art and life they parallel each other so much and it helped me grieve in a way that was good like uh the episode tonight which i, I don't remember anything about it this was really personal for me because it was my father had just passed so oh my god um you know i think i brought a lot of what was already there uh, to everything so i'm glad that i had the guys and the cast and crew teamsters everybody they gave me my space but they gave me a lot of love to let me know i wasn't alone and i'll tell you what i really needed it and i thank them all for it and the people the fans that write in too they're very wonderful i mean i don't know about many other casts but you know you guys are, are are one of my favorites and i get to spend some time around you guys you guys are really a family it's a a lot of people say it. A lot of people say, oh, yeah, we're like family. And then you see them and they're nowhere around. You guys are there for each other. And there's a real brotherhood behind that. Through thick and thin, uh, good times, times that don't always seem the best. Um, I, I really love and respect all these guys. And I'm really happy to see how some of the work has manifested itself. Like, I'm really proud of what Richard's done. Um, I think Rocco, you know, Gilly's character is really just, I'm, I'm floored on that. Um, I'm always excited when I see Creeper do his thing or Joseph and, you know, JD, Clayton, Raul, Irby, you know. You can't forget the, the one king. Mm -mm. And then, then, then there's Emilio, who's always been one of my all time. You know, I always looked up to Emilio even from afar before, you know, I was, uh, I was on the show, you know. So Elgin really, you know, uh, he really, him and Debbie and everybody put together something special this season. You know, I'll be proud of it. Even though it was a tough time, super proud of it. Well, this season very much feels like a first season in a lot of ways because everything is just so different. I mean, we were yeah. talking about this yesterday. The, um, I mean, just even the, the shooting, the visuals, the music. Can we talk about the music? I know you're a music guy. Yeah. And we got to talk, we got to address this music. I'm Shazamming at every moment. Right. Okay. I knew I was just so psyched one day. Um, I was wearing a Motorhead shirt. And I know Elgin loves Motorhead. And he goes, hey pay attention to the first episode and I had, I had no idea what he was talking about my and I thought it was a motorhead reference when they had the scene uh, motorheads killed by death like that music Elgin and I come from that school so having them incorporate that in, into you know into the series it's like for me it's just like yeah because I mean I'm inspired by music I mean I play it you know it uh, punk rock and oi and, and and that whole genre you know from the 80s that I grew up in you know, it was a do-it-yourself thing, and it was real. And a lot of those songs are still, to me, they mean just as much now as they did back then, especially with the current times. And to see Elgin incorporate that, it, man. and the scores and and the, and the you know the, the the background music, everything they have is just dark. I like it. It's beautiful. I yeah. love it, and I I also love the change of the the intro. I don't know what you call it. It's uh, the, so powerful credit. for right. for us. 
for us Latinos, especially like the, the signage and just the visuals, um, yeah. right? Super. I mean, I, I, I was floored. I could play that over and over again, you know, and I think, I don't know if it's on purpose, but I like how when they show the South Los Angeles sign, there's Richard's name. And when they show, you know, times of social uproar, there's Emilio's name. And I don't know if that was on purpose. And I love seeing, you know, Pancho Villa on a Harley Davidson. I think that was just, you know, we're proud of that. You know, there's a lot of misconceptions about our people. And it's like, we're hardworking, proud people. I, I Granted, we're not portraying that so much, but we do have our humanity, but there's so much about our culture that is actually very beautiful and very strong. And that was embraced in those, you know, few minutes of the opening opening credit. Well, yeah. to, your, to your point, you know, I don't like to view people as good or bad because we all kind of live in this gray area. And that really has popped this season because we're seeing both sides of the coin for all of these characters. Like, yes, they're all struggling. Like, you, we can judge Coco for, you know, going on this spiral, but then over here, you're seeing him as a little boy and having to inject his mom. And you have no idea the trauma that he experienced as a child that now he's carrying into adulthood. And now the generational trauma he's given to his daughter. And I, so I feel like we've seen these, all these layers to the character this season, right? Trauma, trauma's real. You know, people dismiss it a lot, but it's it's definitely, a, it interprets itself into its own demon if it's not handled. Hell, I'm, I'm, I can speak big on that, you know, and, and so it's nice to have that embraced because you see these guys that are doing dirt, you know, they're taking lives, there's blood on our hands, and there's definitely a toll that that's going to take. And the fact that that, you know, his is coming to light with his demons, it's just, you know, when he's talking about what's in his head, yeah, I get it. I get it more than you know. I've been there. So it, in a way, it's almost like you're reliving old old, uh, old memories, but it's nice to see the progression from then and now, but also seeing the artistic perspective, you know. I think Richard did an amazing job with all this. Well, again, that was like an example because all of you really have that duality because what I love from the guys is, I mean, we're always used to seeing their tough side, but specifically with Hank, we're seeing the duality and his kind of like, he actually is comfortable in like the light too. We see him being so sweet with his mom and being so sweet with nails. I'm just like, oh my God, I would have never guessed that about him. We just, we're used to seeing the tough side, you know? Right, and I don't even know if it's tough. I mean, to be honest, it's just, you know, this is our lot in life and these are the choices that we've made. Um, we're gonna protect what we have, what's ours. Like you take one of ours, we'll take two of yours. I mean, you know, and, and if you had something going your way, you probably deserved it. A lot of people don't understand that, but it's under in the rules of that world, it's, it's not hard to comprehend. So, you know, for all I know, Hank's mom, you know, could have been discarded with him. And when he saw nails, he very well was like, I'm not gonna let that happen to somebody I care about. You know, it's, uh, it's unknown, but his love for his mom, you know, even when he can come into the house and drop off cashew milk with bruises and, and busted up knuckles, it doesn't phase her because she knows that's her boy and she loves him anyway. Probably doesn't want to know everything he's doing, but he's still got time for her. That's that's his balance. And and it was kind of cool to see that because, you know, with my father's passing, I reunited with my mom and we got to watch that scene. And Deborah and, and, the, and the art department uh, and the set designers put baby pictures of me. And then there's Barstow, oh. who uh, was the first biker I met when I was three. It's my little sister, Annie's godfather, put me on his chopper and rode me around. And they had a photo of Tommy on his chopper up in there and and they made it that that set very personal so my mom got to see that and it was very moving for her and it was a little emotional i'm not gonna lie but it was just very healing too you know so that scene with the mom was was that was something else you know it was something else maybe in, maybe in the future we can see more of that i want to know more about hank yeah me too i mean you know the one thing about hank that is consistent is is he's loyal you know uh to to the to the club, even when he's not agreeing with Bishop on some of his decisions, but he believes in the old ways, but he's also gonna protect the ideals of the new ones because that's when we're easy and those guys are in. It's, he feels like he's holding up two dams, the old ways and the new ways in the name of the club and the, one or both of those dams could collapse. And he'll, he'll probably be the one drowning because he's so loyal like that. And that's his beauty, but that's also his curse, I think. Yeah. Danny Pino has a question in the comments. He wants to yeah. know who your favorite Galindo is. D. 
Danny, you know who that is. I tell you all the time in between takes, it's you. <laughs> he said, after Emily Esteban, I, could, I couldn't see what the rest that he wrote there. No, it's Danny. In fact, this season, when I was talking about people kind of helping me keep my head up, Danny Pino was definitely the, the gent, a uh, true gent. Um, thank you, Danny. I love you, brother. Um, but Danny, Danny, he's my favorite person on and off screen, right? I love Danny. He's such a great dude, man. The All of us Miami Cubans. All us Miami Cubans are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> if 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 Miguel if uh, Miguel goes uh, recruiting for for more Mayans to join his organization, could he consider Hank? That would never happen in the rules of the world. I think because um, when you sign on to the club, you're you're you know you're a lifer. Marcus you're... Alvarez. <clears throat> I'm curious to see where that's going to go. Me you know? too. Because you know Hank and Bishop were originally Oakland members. And I came down to, yeah. Uh, what does when, that mean? Uh, the original, we came uh, from the same charter as Marcus Alvarez. Oh, okay. So we came down to Santo Padre. We, um, yeah, I, I came down with Bishop, so. So what is that called, Open? Open, Oakland, like Oakland. Oh, California. Oakland, I thought you yeah. said op like open enrollment. I thought it was like open enrollment and you can switch or something. Okay, Oakland, I didn't hear yeah. that. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, so um, I'm curious to see the, uh, you know, Marcus Alvarez storyline, you know, because he was, he's the one that kind of, he's a catalyst for a lot of this, you know. Well, speaking of, speaking of just one king, I'm, I'm waiting to see where that kind of, you know, where that all kind of ends up because of all times for Bishop to want to do this one King thing, he picks a season where he's absolutely distracted <clears throat> with, you know, his own personal stuff and the personal stuff of all these people, all of all his, you know, people in the club. And it's like, now you're trying to start a civil war. Are you crazy? But that's the whole point of it. You know, if you think about it, we're, we're open targets. You know, we've upset the cartel, you know, um, we had to have the beef with the Malditos. Now uh, Sam Crow guys don't think too high. We're kind of on our own, even within our own club. You know, with the with the charters that are, are at odds. So that probably gets you a little hyper vigilant. The stress levels go up, and when that, you know, your other demons start coming out. So to me, that would make perfect sense. That yeah, I don't think any of us are in our right minds. We're looking for that balance. You know, you have, you know, Angel Reyes trying to find his with his losses. You know, easy, you know, his trying to have some sense of normality with, with love, because I don't care how tough we are, or how tough we think they are. That word love is very, you know, strong standing. And we all kind of have that need for love, but it's hate and self-loathing and resentment and pain and trauma, like, like Coco. It's just all coming out in the wash. So it makes sense to me that, that, that it would be happening. It's perfect timing, you know. Things are bad, well, let's, let's make it worse because that's what we do. Right? Yeah. Um, somebody in the comments is asking if you were a fan of Sons of Anarchy. I was. In fact, I even tried to audition for a role on Sons, and I'm glad I didn't get it. Cause I, Which I, one? Which one? I, I, I'm trying to remember the exact um, name, but it was part of a support club for the Mayans, and they were doing a patch over and. And Marcus ripped his patch and gave him a beating, and he caused a lot of chaos with the Sam Crow guys. But he got his in the end, so I'm glad I didn't I didn't do that. But it was nice to see something with a, a subculture and a counterculture that's so outside what people consider to be normal. Uh, a lot of the motorcycle clubs and uh, the MC community and and you know enthusiasts, uh, you know, they, they live a certain way that is, is very old school in a lot of ways. A lot of people don't understand. They look at gangland and they think they got it all figured out. It's like, you know, I've gotten to know quite a bit through the years, even as a kid. And um, it's just a different, you know, it's a different mindset. It's a different world. But those rules are, are real. You know, act accordingly, you know. So someone, someone was asking if they want, if you want to see more, they want to see more of your, of Hank's backstory. Do you want to see that explored more next season? I would love to see anything explored. I mean, I'm really, I'm really just happy to be there. You know, uh, just you know, doing what I do for a living. You know, it's like sometimes when I'm riding around, you know, I'm going, man, I have a job where I get to ride Harleys, which is what I love, and and I, you know, 
I get to do what I want to do. I mean, I worked hard to get there, but man, like I look at some of the people I've grown with and some of the relationships that have formed, you know, like I was really happy to see Joseph because I haven't, you know, we miss each other on the phone a few times and it's like, you, you wonder how everybody's doing and you, you know, you care for them. And it, it feels like a job, but it doesn't feel like a job, which is so nice to say that after, you know, when you hit 50, you wonder where you're going with your life, when you're going to grow up and you, you have something fulfilling. A fan named Momo Rodriguez wants to know who is your favorite prospect? <laughs> really? I'll tell you what, um, I think we're supposed to go have dinner. Why don't we talk about it then, huh? No, but the rest of us, are the rest of us going to dinner with y'all? We want to know. Absolutely. I, I, I like having communal meals. I like eating with people and talking. That's when all the ice gets broken. It's my favorite thing. Yeah. Momo, <laughs> you know you are. I love you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm trying to see. Every, everyone's just celebrating you being such a great actor. They, people wish Thanks. the seasons were longer. Me too. I've been trying to, uh, I've been trying to get uh, as many of you guys on here as possible to celebrate all your good work. And I keep telling the network, we need like 25 episodes for me to do what I want to do. It's nice. It's nice to go to work. You know, um, we're lucky to, to tell such a story, you know, I, I, Elgin, El Elgin, Deborah, Brian, the Hammer. Um, I'm trying to think of everybody. And then um, uh, they've just done such a great job with us, you know. And, and I'll be honest, you know, we're very lucky that we live in a country where we get to express good art and, and do our thing, you know. In, in turbulent times, it's nice. When, I, when I'm out on the road and I talk to people, uh, I rode across the Midwest this summer, it's like, this was something people were looking forward to, and it brings them some sense of happiness. And even though the, the subject matter is dark, I'm kind of like, wow, it's it's amazing that we're we're part of that, you know. And um, I don't know, I can't wait. I think I'm gonna get back on the road. I think when we get a little break, I'm gonna probably ride out to to North Dakota again because that was South Dakota was beautiful too. But I think I'm gonna take a little further. Now I'm thinking about it. That just popped in my head. Um, yeah, somebody in the comments was asking if you really ride. I do. I don't even own a car. I have Harley Davidson's, uh, I ride. And the only time I was put in a car um, was, uh, it was raining and they, they didn't want me in a car during the rain. So I had to, uh, you know, I had, to, I had to get four wheels every once in a while. So that was fine. It's Here's weird, a... can't split lanes in cars. <laughs> Here's a really great question. Who is the worst writer from the actors? You know, I, I couldn't even, go on that one because I'll be completely honest with you. Um, outside of, um, outside of, uh, filming, uh, I've written, you know, like I've, I've, I've punched some lanes with, with Richard. I've written with Clayton, uh, Emilio, uh, a lot of the guys and they're, they've become great, great writers, you know, like I'm talking, you know, we're punching on the freeway. We're, uh, you know, uh, what was it? Uh, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say anybody's the worst. It takes a lot to get on two wheels, especially like for me, riding in Hollywood, people are splitting lanes, taking selfies, not paying attention, not signaling. You know, it's tough to do that. And it's tough for, you know, people when they're learning to ride to get out there and do that. I don't think anybody's the worst. I think drivers are the worst most of the time. No. <laughs> That's why I don't even have a car. Yeah. I can't be bothered here in LA. I live in Hollywood too. It's uh... yeah. Well, you know how it is in Hollywood. There's just a wreck every day. Somebody goes into a pole or a pedestrian, and it, it's really not that hard to uh, to drive and not text. It, it, that the stuff can seriously wait. You know, there's been a lot of writers I know this past couple of years that uh, that have taken a pretty bad hit or been left behind. You know, because people are texting, and driving. So, writing is a is a skill, but it's it's also it's my favorite thing. So, I do there write. Was, there was an oh, I'm sorry. No, go for it. No, no, there was a there was another question about um, if there are any Mayans MC chapters outside of California, specifically New York, but obviously anywhere outside of California, are there any chapters? Well, they have the Arizona chapters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. True. Right, and um, every as far as everything else goes, I don't, I don't know if that's been explored yet. I mean, we'll have to wait and see. Imagine yeah. all the drama if we start to really bring in more states. Right. Well, that's the thing. You have. Uh, uh, you have Stockton, you have Oakland, then you've got Santo Padre, and then you've got, you know, uh -huh. like three chapters out of Arizona, but they're all, you know, close to the border, so to speak. So who knows?
you know, we if we had any type of uh, armistice with the Valtos Malditos, that's obviously out the window. So, yeah. We'll have to revisit that question probably at the after the end of this season because yeah. with all this civil war and just one king happening, we don't even know where we're going to be by the end of this season. Right. Okay, guys, we're going to let him go soon. So if you got questions, send them through. Shout out from Edmonton, Canada. Oh. You, got, you guys got fans from all over the world. That's really nice. Thank you, everybody, for, for, for watching the show and supporting us. You know, we appreciate it very much. Toronto, I saw Peru earlier, there's uh, Brazil, I mean, from all over the place, I'm just like, wow, that it, it goes to show like, the, the how universal the stories are that you guys are telling. Well, we, we hope that we, uh, we get to make stuff happen more. And uh, before I do go, I want to my little godchild, um, McKenna, she's my, my niece and my godchild, it's her birthday today. So McKenna, Aww. I love you. I hope to see you soon when I pass through. And um, listen to your parents. Behave. I mean, that's a good message all around, right? Yeah, and don't text and drive. <laughs> don't text and drive. Oh, okay, everybody is asking about what do you want to see happen between Hank and Nails? So I know that that's a big question. Uh, I'll be honest. I, I haven't really taken it that far. Um, the scenes that I've had with Nails, I kind of stay in the moment with. And I'm still kind of digesting all that. And I think um, after this season, people have to digest that too. I really don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to tease that you guys will learn a lot tonight about that situation. Mm -hmm. um, that's a simple enough teaser. So you got to make sure that you watch tonight and then every night. I mean, it's almost over. I can't believe it. I can't believe it, Frankie. It's already been almost 10 episodes. I know it, it, it was here and then it was gone and we waited a whole long uh, time, almost a year, I think, to start filming, right? With the whole COVID thing. Yeah, was it hard for you to get back into character after like that big break? Um, actually, no, because I think we were all so gung-ho and ready to get back to work. And we knew, you know, there was a lot of skepticism, I believe, and people wanted to see how it was going to play out with the changing of the guards and everything. And um, everybody knew that we had to bring our A game. And I believe everybody did. And I think it's showing. And uh, I don't think it was that hard. I think there was more of a willingness for everybody because, you know, so many production companies were having such a tough time, you know, with shutdowns and, and COVID and everything else. So, you know, I wouldn't say it was hard. It was just it had to get done. You know, no matter who had personal, you know, things or losses or everything, we all, you know, Momo had gone through a bit of a loss. Yeah. Well, Raul. Parents, De Deborah, you know, it just, we just had to keep plugging along. And if we were kind of going over to somebody, had to put us back in, in our lane. And then at the end of the season, how, how do you shed Hank or do you not? You know, this season, um, this was tough. Usually, you know, uh, I'm a big stickler when it comes to the trailer. I like to put everything away nicely because the wardrobe people do so much for us. But I like to, I'm kind of OCD, you know. This season when I put everything away, I was a little choked up because my last scene, I remember walking out and the cast and crew wrapped me in another character. And I, I blamed it on allergies, but my eyes were teared up pretty good. I, I was pretty overwhelmed. And JD had stayed behind to see, you know, uh, finish that scene up and, and I, I was just, I was really taken. And when I put, you know, Hank in the, in the wardrobe area to go away, you know, I said farewell to him for a while. I'm glad, it, you know, I had him to bounce off and kind of uh, let some of the demons go, so to speak. Uh, it was tough. It was really tough this time to kind of put Hank away. But I was also at the same time as a human, I was kind of glad to, because I really had to, I had to process a lot of stuff after that. But the bon voyage from the cast and crew and the Teamsters was beautiful. And that was probably one of the most beautiful days of my life. Like, I, I felt, you know, that I go back to that word love. I, I, I felt it because I really needed it. I didn't realize how much I needed it. You know, I wanted to go home to my lady Nadia and have a nice dinner and just decompress. And that's, that's what I did. So she was also my rock this season. She, she kind of, yeah. Shout out to Nadia, my other Hollywood neighbor. 
That's right. That's right. So yeah, it's, she 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 is a badass like rocker chick. She is, and I had no idea. Uh, I was never discussed when we met. I didn't know anything about her other than I'd see her around the, you know, the neighborhood. We had mutual friends, and yeah, she thinks I asked her out. I think she asked me out. That'll all be an argument that never settles. But uh, <laughs> she's 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 also you know like my best friend. And oh, that's rock. so nice. Yeah, I'm I'm, man, you know, yeah, I'm so lucky to, I'm so lucky to have that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's the perfect note to leave on. Yeah. Well, thank you, Rosie. Thank for you for joining me, Frankie. And everybody out there, thank you for the support and the messages, uh, especially when my father passed. I got them. Thank you so much. And I hope you enjoy this, uh, the rest of the season. And stay safe out there and don't text and drive. I almost always announce, well, no, I every episode I announce who's coming up for the next one. But being that it's the finale, I'm not going to tell you guys, but it's a super-sized episode of Mayans MC <laughs> Instagram Live, and you guys will know soon. Um, EW.com, you can see all my postmortems tonight. I won't tell you who is included because that gives away a lot. But check that out and make sure to tune in tonight on FX at 10 p.m. for episode 309. Oh, and if you miss it, in 24 hours after that, it's available on FX on Hulu. Got to pay them bills, right? Boom. If Thank not, you, Frankie. the house and watch it, yeah. Bye, Rosie. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thanks for joining us. Bye. See you next week. <laughs>